Freedom's greetings, Hell Divers. Erevin here to bring you everything you need to know about the liberation system in Hell Divers 2. The mechanics behind liberating planets in this game are extremely complicated and, best of all, completely obscured from your field of vision unless you use third party apps or get your intel from Discord communities like mine. So I've decided to compile every bit of information here on how this system works so you can make more informed decisions on what planets you choose to dive on and spread the maximum amount of democracy. Let's get started with the basic information as to how it all works. Every planet you attempt to liberate has a hidden health value that when dealt enough damage, causes the planet to be turned over to us. The value for offensive campaigns will typically be 1 million health, and they generate a percentage of this health per hour based on yet another hidden value that you can only view on websites such as the Helldivers companion app. Something I very much suggest that you bookmark and also complain to Arrowhead about for not making this critical information available within the game. Now this regen rate is typically between 1% and 3%. These seem to be manually controlled by Joel behind the scenes, determined by a system only known to him and him alone. We have seen regeneration as high as 10% though, in the case of Meridia, as they wanted this event to last for a bit before reducing their regeneration. So in the case of story-based events, this regeneration can also be manipulated much higher for the sake of telling a more interesting narrative. What makes this regeneration such an important factor is it basically is determining how much of the community needs to be committed to the common goal of liberating the planet in order to see any actual progress. Many times this week alone, I've checked the companion app and seen thousands of our Helldivers making absolutely no ground on planets lacking the majority of our forces. Now, typically, you need to look for planets with over 10,000 Helldivers in order for your contribution to actually be working towards a goal in this system, due to how, on average, over 25% of the player base is required for the needle to actually be moving forward during most of these campaigns. Anything less than that, and you get what's happened on Gakrox recently, where 5,395 of our Helldivers were on pace to liberate this planet after two centuries, 37 years, and 10 months. So if you want to make a difference in the Galactic War and do your part, make sure to always stick with the majority even when you think another planet might be more tactically advantageous. There is simply nothing we can accomplish when divided. Now when it comes to defense, things are significantly different. There is no regeneration rate. The health is set between 150,000 and 1.5 million depending on the severity of the assault against us, also completely obscured from in-game field of view. During this invasion, we have only 24 hours to generate enough influence over the planet to circumvent the attack. But this is not the only way to win a defense. Something you can actually see within the game are the supply lines. So through these supply lines, attacks are engaged against us from one planet to another. If we successfully take the planet that has forced a defense upon one of our planets, the attack against us is then cancelled, and both planets are liberated for the glory of Super-Earth. This has in the past been referred to as a gambit by the community. So if you've heard that term before, you now know what it was referring to. Earlier this month, we had an attack against the planet of Mastia, which was a great call for concern as it threatened the DSS on Galavare being surrounded. The attack, however, was launched against us from Shelt, a planet we already had substantial liberation progress against before the attack had even begun, allowing us to pull enough forces in time to liberate Shelt and by doing so, cancel the attack on Mastia, scoring a massive victory prevailing via defense through offense. This is of course not always possible to do and should only be considered when substantial progress has already been made towards attacking the planet where the invasion is originating from. Due to the often massive difference in health we need to work through for an offensive campaign compared to a defensive one. On top of combating that hourly regeneration, this basically means that it will always require peak coordination for our forces to prevail in the event of attempting a gambit. So now you understand the importance of sticking together on the galactic map, 
fighting for planets that have low regeneration rates listed on the Helldivers companion app, which I will be leaving in the description. Please bookmark it. And how to win defensive operations, not only through defense, but through gambits as well. So now let's talk about how you can maximize your personal influence and liberation rate contributions as the influence you see generated at the end of the operations is determined by many different factors. Now, as you probably know, every time you complete an operation, whether this ends in success or failure, you deal damage to the planet's health pool via your generated influence. The damage you deal is based upon the experience earned throughout the operations multiplied by a modifier based on difficulty when you successfully complete the operation. This is important because if you fail while you still deal the base damage, you do not get the very important multiplier due to your difficulty level, meaning your contribution is basically null and void. In fact, it might even hurt us as we'll get into later. Now, anything you do within the mission that generates experience points is going to result in dealing more damage to the planet's health bar. This includes side objectives, enemy outposts, the main objective, the bonus for successfully extracting, and the bonus for finishing the mission with time remaining. The multiplier for your influence scales the exact same way as the experience bonus for higher difficulty missions as well, meaning a mission completed on Super Hell Dive difficulty 10 is going to yield far more experience than an operation completed on Trivial difficulty 1, both due to the fact that there are far more objectives to build up the base value with, but also because all of that influence is being multiplied by 400%. If you didn't know this, the difficulty to experience ratio is as follows, with experience scaling from 100% to 200% between the difficulties of 1 to 6, scaling by 20% per level, and scaling from 200% all the way up to 400, gaining 50% per difficulty level between 7 and 10. So, Playing at the highest difficulty that your squad can comfortably complete all objectives quickly will yield the best influence and liberation per hour towards the cause. There are, however, two potential penalties that you need to consider when choosing your difficulty should you be attempting to maximize your contribution to the war effort. Should your team fail to extract, even if you've completed every objective on the map before all being either mutilated or not making it back on time during a blitz so no one makes it back on the bus, you will suffer a 30% penalty to the influence that you've generated during that mission. Importantly as well, every death you suffer also imparts a 2% penalty on your final influence score up to a maximum of a 20% penalty at 10 deaths, meaning although you do have 20 lives to get the job done, squads able to maintain a low casualty rate are able to make far more progress towards the liberation or defense of our planets than those using all 20 lives and failing to extract. We might be the most expendable fighting force in the galaxy. But think twice before throwing your pal into that 380mm barrage you just called down for the good of us all. Moving on to the impact modifier. This is the final piece of the puzzle as it comes into play after you've completed your operation and have received your score based on the performance. In order to ensure that liberation rates do not scale with the number of players actually playing the game at the same time, this global modifier is applied increasing your individual squad influence generation when the number of players is at its lowest, such as the month following the escalation of freedom or through the night for the USA when a large portion of the player base is asleep, but decreasing your squad influence when there are large numbers of players online fighting for democracy, like on Saturdays or directly after a large update. This modifier updates every 30 minutes based on the data it received, and does not care about how many players are online, but how many players have played an operation within the last 30 minutes. So don't worry. AFK divers are not reducing our liberation rates. It is entirely calculated based on the number of instances of damage dealt to the planets within a 30-minute rolling time frame. 
Interestingly, because this modifier reduces not due to the number of players and missions, but due to the number of instances of damage received, solo diving, even very efficiently, is always going to get worse results than a full squad of four completing missions much quicker due to their influence being tallied together, meaning a well-oiled machine of a squadron is going to be how you can best do your part and maximize your spread of democracy across the stars. Now that will about sum up everything you could possibly want to know about how these systems work within Helldivers 2 and how you can best influence the outcome of the Second Galactic War. Be sure to share this video around so we can better inform our fellow Helldivers on the subject of efficient spreading of managed democracy as you would be surprised how far along in this war we would have been should this information become more common knowledge. Make sure to bookmark the Helldivers companion app as well so you can keep yourself informed on all the critical information missing from the game's UI when it comes to making the decision on where to dive and if you don't want to deal with all that extra thinking and math, everyone is welcome. Welcome to join my community discord, The Ghost Divers, where we post our current joint plan and target planet every day while discussing the Galactic War. We also host a very active Looking for Group channel for those looking for other well-coordinated Helldivers to maximize democracy with, and are planning to be one of the most successful platoons in the Helldivers universe when that system is finally implemented upon the completion of the DSS. If you can't be bothered with any of that, at least keep an eye out for my community posts as I've been attempting to play intergalactic traffic controller pushing the YouTube audience at large towards a common goal when it comes to galactic liberation all month. Thanks for watching till the end, and have yourselves a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Well, you just run across dead enemies. I got RR on the, uh, on the Hulk. It's done. Yep. <laughs>